Today I'm going to show you how I make my ACEO prints. So here on the screen you'll see the template that I've made for doing my ACEO prints. This will be available for you guys in the description. It's a PSD format so you need to use Photoshop to utilize it. So to begin with you need to go to file then place choose the ACO that you wish to print simply click on it press open and then you need to drag it to one of the squares and ensure that it aligns correctly with one of the red squares once you're happy right hand click and then press place continue until you've filled all nine of the squares so after I've finished on Photoshop, I need to then print my images. I use the archival inks on my Epson printer to ensure that they last and they've got longevity. And I use the Somerset Enhanced paper. It's 225 GSM and it's a cotton paper. It gives a lovely vivid colour to all of the ACO prints. Now I print these off in nine. Obviously there's one missing here. Um, they sort of come in whichever way, shape and form I place them. As you can see, some are slightly upside down. And then I can cut out whichever one it is that I require. So after printing, the obvious thing we need to do is take a sharp pair of scissors and start to cut out the particular image that we want to make the ACO print with. So the next thing you're going to need is some mount board. Mine are already pre-cut to 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches using a guillotine. Next you're going to need some glue. I'm using Mod Podge Matte and also a brush. It doesn't need to be a specific brush, so you're going to use it to apply the Mod Podge. So you need to place the Mod Podge onto the cream side of the mount board. Make sure you get a good even coverage. Once you're happy you've applied a good coat of the Mod Podge, you're going to need to take the ACO print you printed earlier and you're going to simply place it onto the mount board. Ensure everything lines up and you're happy with it. Apply a firm amount of pressure and place down on the side. Place something over the back of the ACO print to protect it and then you're going to require something heavy, a book. Um, you can use a flower press but it's quite fiddly a box or anything. As long as the print doesn't get damaged, that's fine. Once you're happy that the glue is taking effect and it's nicely stuck down, you just need to trim any overhang. So any overhanging of mount board on the ACO print side and any overhanging of the ACO print on the mount board side. Make sure you do this with sharp scissors and then once you've done that what I like to do is just take an old emery board and just file around the sides to make sure that it's all nice and smooth and that everything aligns. I don't want to see any white of the mount board on the front and I don't want to see any overhanging of the print on the back. In order to ensure that the ACO print is firmly attached to the mount board and is not going to start and pry up on the edges, what I do is I take some of the Mod Podge and just very gently go around all of the sides to ensure that it's completely sealed. So just a thin layer of the Mod Podge around each of the edges. Next I spray the ACO print. This protects it, particularly the edges that can tend to um, lose the ink. The next thing I need to do is ensure that it has its protective acid-free sleeve. These are the trading card sleeves. You can get these on eBay in most places. And also the certificate of authenticity. Now these are the business cards Vistaprint produce. And that's it. That's how I make my acid-free archival printed ACO prints.